For us, this case is not really about autism. It's about the safety of our children. Um, they were attacked on multiple occasions. They have been slapped, hit, kicked, um, basically terrorized. My son on his fourth birthday was riding his bike and the child threw him to the ground, uh, grabbed with both hands his hair and shook him violently. That's one side of the story. A California couple with an autistic son facing a lawsuit from their neighbors. That 11-year-old boy is accused of attacking other kids on multiple occasions, as you just heard. But the neighbors aren't blaming the child. They're blaming the parents for not supervising their son, and they want him declared to be a public nuisance. Joining us now, criminal defense attorney Jonna Swilber and former prosecutor Dan Shore. So, Jonna, mm -hmm. a judge obviously thinks this is a valid case. That's why this is continuing. But right. I'm wondering if you could tell our viewers why this qualifies as a legal issue that should be settled in court rather than settled within the community. All right, so there are laws in all 50 states to some degree that will put liability on parents for the willful behavior of their children. So issue number one here that a court's going to have to decide is, was this child's behavior, behavior willful? He had a mental disability. There are a lot of autistic children. An expert is going to have to come in and decide, was this child capable of forming the intent to hurt other people? That, that part of the lawsuit may have some legs. What doesn't have any legs is that these, this neighborhood wants to declare that their property values have been lowered by the fact that there's an autistic child living among them, and that part is ridiculous. Really, because, Dan, that's what they say. This, mm -hmm. is, a, this is a hot real estate market, and we're going to have to disclose to future buyers if this child is still in the neighborhood. Now, we should note that the child and his family, the autistic child and his family, have moved out. They still own the home right. in the neighborhood, which is why the neighbors say we're continuing the case, because they could, of course, move back. What about the part about their property yeah, value Yeah, the property there? values is certainly the weaker part of the case. The stronger part is asking for the injunction to make the parents supervise their child more closely. Remember, this is not a suit against the child, and it's not alleging that the child is at fault. It's saying that the parents are not properly well, supervising Dan, their child. Dan, let me ask you about that, though. How does the court rule? I mean, how can this case be resolved legally? You get into a dicey area, right, where the court then has to tell the parents how to parent? Do, can the court actually say to the parents, if you move back into the neighborhood, your child can't play outside? That's, it's a tough issue, and you'd like to see this settled outside of court, of mm -hmm. course. The, the question for the court is going to be, what kind of duty of care do the parents owe, owe the society to make sure their child is behaving correctly and supervising their child? And according to the plaintiffs in the lawsuit, the parents are looking the other way while their child's being violent, of mm -hmm. course the parents are going to have a different version of what's happening. And it's a tough issue, but the court has to resolve it if it goes that far. The parents say that this is a witch hunt, Jonna. Mm -hmm. uh, they said that they've moved into this new ha neighborhood where they are renting. They don't have any of the same problems. Mm -hmm. How strong is their case against these families that are suing them? See, but they're only defending against the parents that are, that are suing them. Where I think that they have a strong case, though, in, in defense of themselves is you can't get damages for say, pain and suffering because one 11-year-old boy punches another 11-year-old boy in the nose. If there are definite out-of-pocket expenses, medical expenses, yeah, the parents will be on the hook for that. But for anything else, I don't see where this would go, legally speaking. Public nuisance, Dan, what, what would that mean for this child if he was declared that way in, in some way in the court? Right. So a nuisance in general is interfering with someone else's enjoyment of life or property. And the public nuisance is... That could be a, a lot of people, right? right? When you start thinking about that definition. Right. Now, the public mm -hmm. nuisance is when it's community-wide and it's some public right. So there, the plaintiffs are saying, we can't enjoy our neighborhood, our homes, our lives, because this child keeps interfering with us in a violent way, especially with right. our kids, and that the parents are not supervising the child. So if if he was found to be a public nuisance, people are concerned that might be a bad precedent for other kids that sure. are suffering well, from I'm autism. Well, I'm curious about the precedent that yeah. does set, Jonna, because I'm sure some mm -hmm. parents out there, it's resonating with them. Maybe they don't have a kid in the neighborhood who's autistic, but has mm -hmm. a kid who's particularly aggressive or violent. So mm -hmm. is this a lawsuit that then could be followed by other parents who simply don't like the way a child's behaving? and? in the particular neighborhood? That's where this could go, which is why we don't want to set this precedent. The precedent we should set is the parents should be gone after by prosecutors in the family court system because obviously they're not supervising their child, whether he's autistic or not. And that places that child in danger. And that's where I think the court should step in and say, wait a minute, this is on you parents, but not because your child is misbehaving because you're not controlling so the child. So it's interesting. You say really the focus should be about the care for this autistic Absolutely. child who, if he's tackling other kids, is putting him 
himself in, in harm's way. Absolutely. And he's putting himself in harm's way because you might have a parent or another child who wants to, quote, protect their property and then will go out of their way to harm this, this child. And that's not okay. It'll be interesting where it goes from here. You'll be back next hour, our next hour of Happening Now, to talk about another really interesting case that involves parents and, well, juveniles, but maybe not. They're going to be tried as adults. Great to have you both. Thank, Thank you. you.